If you're only putting fertilizer in your hair, but you have androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness, then those hairs will still miniaturize and eventually you'll still have loss. I get a lot of questions about drugs to offset hair loss. Most of those drugs are going to operate through the DHT system, the dihydrotestosterone system, for the reasons we talked about before, DHT receptors being on the scalp and uh, causing beard growth on the face. Is it the case that a number of people taking things like Propecia and other things to block the DHT or disrupt the DHT pathway are going to experience diminished sex drive, diminished, you know, kind of motivation and general vigor? And if so, are there alternatives like topical DHT antagonists that that they might use if they want to keep their hair but not have those negative effects. The way that I think about um, hair loss is you have your fertilizers, and also known as growth agonist, and then you have your anti-androgens. Whether they're systemic or topical, there is both, but that's the general layman's way to think about hair loss. If you're only putting fertilizer in your hair, but you have androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness, then those hairs will still miniaturize and eventually you'll still have loss. By the way, it's difficult to tell if miniaturization is happening unless you have a magnifying glass. You're talking about miniaturization of the hair follicle. Correct. Right? Okay. Yep. So the what hair... can reverse that miniaturization? Each individual has, again, we mentioned the androgen receptor. Males only have one androgen receptor gene. It's on their X chromosome. So depending on how sensitive that androgen receptor is, is, and depending on the density of the receptors in the hair follicle, you can have a arbitrary threshold and you don't know what this threshold is until you start to have miniaturization and loss of hair. But over the threshold, the follicle will die and eventually the stem cell will leave. But under the threshold, you're okay. Every androgen binds to the same androgen receptor. So there is nothing special about DHT. DHT is just a stronger androgen. So the higher your SHBG, things that increase SHBG are beneficial beneficial for hair loss prevention because you have less binding of that receptor. So if you think about hair loss, specifically androgenic or male pattern baldness in the terms of that androgen receptor and everything in general binding to it, not just DHT, but also testosterone, it's helpful. It's just that DHT is a huge battering ram, whereas the other androgens are just light presses on the door. Are some of the topical DHT receptor antagonists going to be a better choice for people that want to maintain their hair, or grow more hair if they want to avoid side effects? Likely so. Some individuals benefit from systemic, uh, a systemic decrease in DHT for a couple of reasons. One could be prostate, and then one could actually be hypertrophy of the myocardium. So DHT also disproportionately thickens the ventricle. So for someone on TRT, that might be a benefit that is prone to thickening of the ventricle at baseline. However, many people that have just a bit of predisposition. They can use things that are topical antiandrogens. Ketoconazole is one of them. Caffeine is actually another one. Wait, drinking caffeine? Topical caffeine. Oh, I was going to say, my hair tends to grow pretty fast, so it might be that, but I drink a lot of caffeine. So topical caffeine, really, rubbing yeah. coffee on their head or taking caffeine tablets. And how do people get caffeine into the hair follicle? Topically, the caffeine enters the scalp and somewhat crowds out the androgen. It is a weak effect. It's likely just strong enough to be clinical significant. Usually caffeine is put into formulations with other things like ketoconazole that are also weak antiandrogens. Of note, spironolactone can be prescribed topically, but is it is absorbed systemically because of the size of the molecule. So unless your doctor specifically prescribes that for you, especially as a male, do not use topical spironolactone. Topical finasteride is also a smaller molecule, so it is also systemically absorbed, but it is not extremely well systemically absorbed. If you take topical finasteride, ride, then usually your systemic DHT will decrease by about 30%. Topical dutasteride is likely a tiny bit systemically absorbed, but it's unique because its half-life is much faster at a lower dose. So topical dutasteride will not affect your systemic DHT at all. And I've seen this anecdotally on many people on topical dutasteride therapy. The interesting thing about turmeric is most of its beneficial action, not all of it, some people benefit from systemic uh, turmeric and some people that can tolerate it well, it's actually great for the prostate. I'll quickly mention a few other things. One, saw palmetto is also a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, but only a couple of the isoenzymes. There's three main isoenzymes, and a lot of the problem is that you're inhibiting a couple of the isoenzymes, but not the other one. Finasteride inhibits one and two. Dutasteride actually inhibits all three. And finasteride inhibits the isoenzyme that is in genital skin, but not 
not in the skin throughout the rest of your body. So a lot of the side effects of finasteride, which is loss of sensation and loss of erectile function, have to do with the disconcordance between the sensitivity of the genital skin and the skin. There is mythology out there that creatine can increase hair loss. There's at least one study showing that creatine can increase DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and DHT is one of the primary hormones that can promote male pattern baldness. So the question therefore is, does creatine supplementation increase the rate of hair loss? Theoretically it can, but hair loss is not a reason to avoid taking creatine. Think of it as just bringing you to what you are naturally inclined to have. If your conversion of testosterone to DHT is already high, then often creatine does not affect this. It just kind of resets your balance between testosterone being aromatized to estrogen or being 5-alpha reduced DHT. So it's not going to speed up hair loss more than just naturally being a male does. And is it true that if your mother's father was bald, that you will be bald in the same pattern? And if that he wasn't, you won't? That is a decent correlation. Part of the proposed mechanism of this, well, there's several genes and you can actually test your genes for hair loss. You do get a decent amount of them from your mother. The unique thing you get from your mother that she got one of the copies from her father is your X chromosome. And the androgen receptor gene is on your X chromosome. So all men got their androgen receptor gene from their mother. It's on their X chromosome, not on the Y chromosome. Correct. Interesting. Even though all of the sort of uh, quote unquote male, male promoting genes are on the Y chromosome, like mullerian inhibiting, et cetera.